Great. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of council for Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. Uh, thank you for coming in today and this it's a variable weather day. Uh, we'll uh, make to announce that the, the meeting will be recorded uh, for record keeping purposes. Uh, we'd ask if you could to uh, turn off your cell phones if possible, just so they don't go off while somebody's in the middle of a speech. We'd appreciate that. Um, moving on to our agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Council, I had a chance to look at the agenda. Are there any changes, errors, omissions that we have at this time? Okay. So the resolution is the agenda for the regular meeting of council be accepted as distributed, moved by Councillor Aloka, seconded by Deputy Mayor Miskimans. All those in favor? Thank you. Motion's carried. Council, any uh, possible conflicts with due to pecuniary interest at this time? Seeing none, if that does pop up, obviously, as usual, please make yourselves aware and we can deal with it at that time. Um, we don't have any closed confidential sessions today, uh, just so for point of interest, if we did, we usually run them at four o'clock, so we don't have to disturb, uh, you know, that every time it's at 5.30, our meetings. Um, so we'll move and uh, go into a moment of silent reflection. If you're able to stand, uh, please do and join us. Um, usually we take this time to remember some uh, events in our community. I think for those of you that uh, I know that our power went out a few times last night, and we, we always talk about our first responders, but uh, in this case, I'd like to highlight the uh, members of Hydro One that were out and around in my neighborhood at the three and four in the morning. So it was nice for them to uh, get our power back on. Thank you very much. Please join me in a moment of reflection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. <coughs> uh, moving on to our land acknowledgement statement. Pleased to announce it tonight. The Township of Tiny acknowledges that we are situated on what was once traditional land of the Huron-Wendat Nation and the Ishinibic people. And we are also referred to as the Chippewa Tri-Council and comprised of Beausoleil First Nation, Rama First Nation, and Georgina Island First Nation. The land on which the township is situated is within a portion of three different treaties. Treaty number five is the Penetanguishene Purchases of 1798. Treaty number 16 is the Lake Simcoe Purchase of 1815. And Treaty 18 is the Nottawa Purchase of 1818. The Township of Tiny has been and will continue to be an important homeland and gathering place for Indigenous peoples and Métis citizens. Altogether, we are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters, and we are here to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health, and integrity for generations to come. Thank you very much. Moving on to announcements and presentations. We have a couple of check presentations to kick this portion off tonight. Um, the first one is uh, Dr. Vic Ralhan, who, Vic, Dr. Ralhan is Chief of Staff of, and, uh, and Angela Wiggins, Vice President of People and Culture with the Georgian Bay Physician Recruitment. So Dr. Vic and Angela, if you could join me up in the front here, we'll have a little check presentation. We have our, have it all ready to go. I appreciate the contribution of our vote fund. That's not what we use for. Council, you should get in here. Are you sure? We'll do it right here, just in front of our. I don't think it's like to be. He's a very nice guy. Yes. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. What's that? Where would you like yeah. us to stand? Well, anyone, we're all in jail in here. Don't worry. Wherever you can find a spot. That's great. You want this chair to go, don't you? Or higher. Yeah. Higher. 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 Thanks, Super. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you, Dr. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay, let's take a few minutes. And Okay, we'll have one more presentation in a couple seconds as we, uh, we change the change our check. Uh, I'd just like to give everyone a little bit of background on the, on the check that we just presented to the uh, make sure I get this right Georgian Bay Physician Recruitment. Um, this is a, a multi municipality organization that Tiny is a member of with our neighboring municipalities and uh, Georgian Bay General Hospital and their team. Um, we are actively uh, participating in the recruitment of doctors and as you know it's a very difficult uh, time right now to get doctors and um, we're a community of median age as I've told you before at 56 so our needs are getting bigger and bigger as we go on and uh, which is great we, and we want people to be moving here and enjoying and have quality of life uh, so the township is very proud to be taking a positive role in uh, recruiting and helping to uh, to recruit uh, uh, doctors and for our community. So um, very innovative group. I, I hate to speak for Dr. Relhan, but I'll pass along the one a unique story that I he passed along in our most recent meeting was a, a method of uh, searching for doctors and looking at opportunities for doctors that maybe otherwise are not around. And um, Dr. Relhan has been very active in uh, investigating and sourcing doctors and meeting doctors that are working in the Caribbean. So um, I find this actually quite interesting, being from Tiny, because we're going from one beach to another. So hopefully we can uh, we can work and, and we partner with Dr. with Dr. Relhan and his his committee as much as we can to be able to attract people to our community. So thank you for all your hard work for you and your team. And uh, please don't hesitate to ask us for any any more that we can do to help out. And we look forward to working together in 2024. Thanks very much. Great. Pressure's on our clerk here to write legibly. <laughs> our next uh, presentation is uh, is with regards to Georgian Bay General Hospital Foundation. Uh, and here today are Jesse Dees, Jesse Gray, and is just yourself, Jesse? Oh, I'm sorry, the Robin's over there. Okay, <laughs> he moved on me there. Okay, great, okay, good. And uh, Robin, uh, Kazanowski, uh, who's the communications officer of the GBGH. So we're pleasure, pleased to have you here. Um, I'll give a little bit of background on this first for everybody that uh, uh, we provide amount on an annual basis to the Georgian Bay General Hospital for their general use. Uh, we also participate in any other opportunities we can to, uh, to uh, uh, I personally participate on a, a finance committee with the Georgian Bay General Hospital to, uh, we know how integral this is to our community. Um, and I hope you've all been uh, monitoring and looking at the MRI fund and the, the, the fundraising that's been going on with that. It's been very successful. Uh, and again, whether there's, there's big, big plans for General, Georgian Bay General Hospital, the land next door, and, and there's some great opportunities, and uh, we look forward to uh, to working with uh, Georgian Bay General Hospital in the future even more. So, Jesse, come on up, Robin. If you can, we can take a picture with you in this one too, and we'll uh, we'll do this once more, and then we can let you go for dinner. <laughs> Yes, still didn't invite us. <laughs> Jesse, do you want to slide that one chair? There we are. Great, thank you very much. Have a great evening, thank you. Okay, moving on to announcements into uh, section H2, uh, which is Severn Sound Environmental Association 2024 Tree Seedling Program. And our Director of Operations, uh, Tim Leach, will have something to say on this. Tim? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, we have uh, this tree seedling program, and Tiny uh, will be hosting the pickup of the seedling program. 
uh, which is uh, goes on annually through the SSEA, uh, which has uh, seedlings for some native trees and shrubs. Uh, it'll be at our public works yard that uh, we'll be doing the pickup. It's going to be the last week of April or first week of May, whether depending, a Friday and a Saturday. And just some uh, stats for it. Um, Tiny this year ordered uh, 2,000 uh, seedlings from residents within Tiny. And since 2007, uh, we've ordered 34,000 uh, seedlings it's from uh, all the residents of Tiny. In this particular program this year from the eight member municipalities, um, 200 plus people ordered uh, 9,700 seedlings. So it's, uh, again, a great, uh, great opportunity for people to get these seedlings and have them planted and regenerate some of our forests within our area. So we're very happy to be able to announce this, and I thought it would be important for, us, uh, for the public to know that we'll be hosting it this year for the pickup. Thank you. Thank you, Director Leach. Council, any comments? Good. Okay. D Director Leach, are there any unspoken for? Like, are there any extra ordered, or are they all accounted for? From what I gather, they've uh, been accounted for, but uh, I'll double check and I'll see if there is any extras. And if there is, then we'll make sure we work through our communications group and uh, let the residents know if there's any extras that are available. I'll follow up on that tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, National Volunteer Week is April 14th to 20th, 2024. Um, celebration of all the work that volunteers do, and uh, that's a big, big component of, uh, of our, our community. Um, 12 committees of council working on 13 um, right now, and uh, as I mentioned before, it, it's uh, unique uh, in our number, our large number of, of, of participation without throughout the county of Simcoe. So we're very proud of that and uh, very proud of all the volunteers that are on our committees of council. Earth Week is taking place as well, April 14th to 20, uh, 20th, 2024. And uh, moving on to H5, uh, council, uh, give you each an opportunity if you have anything you'd like to update us on. You'd like to kick it off, Councillor Wama. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Uh, on a happy note, we have uh, April 5th, so this Friday, the SSEA is having a open house in Elmville. We'll, uh, the, event is, the event is at 33 Queen Street West in Elmville from 12 to 4, and we do have a guest speaker at 1 o'clock. This is Scott Parent. Uh, sounds like a fantastic story. I'm interested in hearing about his paddleboard around the Great Lakes. Uh, we'll be, uh, there'll be booths, uh, storyboards that go over all of the work that the SSEA is doing on... Uh, stormwater management, cold water stream monitoring, open water monitoring, all of the above, and all of our staff will be on board. <coughs> uh, so if you have questions, comments about anything uh, related to environment, that'll be a great opportunity for the public to, uh, to reach out and do so. Um, secondly, Your Worship, if I can continue. Please, yes, multiples, fine. On a less happy note, I want to call out cyberbullying uh, tonight. Um, there is, uh, I would say, an influx of this happening as it relates to the municipality. Uh, staff, council are continuously barraged with comments that are public. Uh, Facebook pages are not private unless you make them so. And those, uh, those messages are not seen just by our staff, ourselves. They're seen by the public, our friends, and they're shared. Uh, just like in a school setting, which is now a very uh, serious issue, you can be expelled from schools for, for doing this, it causes stress. Stress for myself, stress for my compatriots, and more importantly, stress for her, our, our staff. Our staff act on council's directions. So when Robert Lamb does something, it's not Robert Lamb's decision to do it, he's acting on council's direction. So first off, if you have issues with any of our staff members, stop attacking them, come and talk to council. And if you wouldn't say it to my face or council's face or that staff member's face, I would seriously think twice about sharing it online. Screen courage is exactly that, and it's wrong. There's legislation being put out for it now. There's serious consequences for some of these things. I've seen comments about people wanting to run council over with trucks um, online, on public Facebook pages, and it's wrong. I've also seen attacks on our staff. Most recently, there was one on our director of finance. It was recently taken down. However, it's still 
defam uh, defamatory libel, there's intimidation, there's uttering threats. These are all criminal harassment things. And I encourage the public to stop. If you have concerns, if you have issues, council was elected here to listen to those. Reach out to us directly. We all have emails, we all have cell phone numbers, and they're all available online. Call us, talk to us, but threatening to hang council members in a meme form, not appropriate. Um, Your Worship, I'm gonna leave it at that, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Woman. Council, Councillor Aloka, please. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, this is a reminder that on Tuesday, uh, June 4th, we're having our annual senior symposium. Uh, so uh, please sign up, it sells out. Uh, we're only at a capacity of about a, um, 120, I believe. So uh, take note, and uh, there are at least four, if not five, interesting speakers lined up. And we have um, a complimentary lunch for those in attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Loka. Council, any other announcements this time? Okay, good. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We always like to remind you to uh, subscribe to Civic Web and get uh, automatic updates on a regular basis. And of course, tinyconnect.ca at uh, tinyconnect.ca. So there we go. Okay, moving on to section I, we have uh, deputations to council. Uh, this is the open portion. These are the, this is a new format uh, and uh, it, the length of the the, uh, the the deputations has not changed for the open portion nor the, the scheduled. Uh, these are five minutes in length. Um, and we'll, uh, if you'd like to, anybody in the crowd would like to come up, if you could write your name, your address, that is what needed, uh, and your topic of discussion. Now I will also remind you that your deputation will be included on a future, on the next meeting. So some people are surprised that they're, your comments were included. Um, they will be. You can go online the, the next when the meeting minutes are passed and see the see your uh, the summary of your deputation. So, just want to give everybody the heads up. So, please feel free. Come on up and make a deputation. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, if you could put it in, yeah, that would be great. We can do it after, that's fine. No, please have a seat. Grab a seat there, and, and if you could just push the button on the, the speaker there, just so people online can, can hear you. So, if you'd like to state your name and, uh, and your topic, and please feel free to go ahead. My name is Dave Wolf. I'm a proud, proud resident of Tiny Township for nine years now. Best move of our life. Uh, good, good evening, Mayor Evans and Councillors. I'm here today to ask Council to delay making any recommendations to proceed with the new Admin Center. Please listen to your constituents. Others have and will speak about costs, process, needs, and anticipated outcomes. I want to speak to the frankly extraordinary efforts this current council has made to avoid interacting with tiny, towners, tiny taxpayers regarding this matter. You are proposing to accept the recommendations of an almost secretive internal committee, the TTAC, that includes two <coughs> councillors, tiny staffers, along with, remarkably, a paid employee for the consulting firm that stands to reap huge profits from it. The TTAC flatly refuses to include any member of the public. Many tiny departments invite citizens to join committees to help make good decisions. Recreation, seniors, even a newly suggested septage committee. In fact, there are 14 separate committees listed in the tiny website. Admirable. We can help decide what happens to our waste, but not the new tiny town hall. Which is suddenly called the Tiny Administration Center. Sounds, it certainly sounds far more serious. But the single largest proposed expenditure in tiny history that will put all citizens into a debt situation for 30 plus years is created by the TTAC committee, who can apparently pick and choose who, what, and any information they receive and consider. Given the time allotted, I want to address the numerous efforts made to keep citizens off this stage. Reduced deputation opportunities are just the beginning but the worst example of your efforts to stifle constituent input. Subsequent to the disastrous December 11th meeting, a hastily conceived new town hall email address was announced that citizens were earnestly encouraged to submit any and all comments on the subject. Let us know what you think, you asked. When I did, I got the same similar automatic response that all others tell me they have received, a message that said, thanks for input, be considered, and nothing else, ever. 
The December 11th meeting needs to be called out for what it was. Put simply, a contrived and manipulative effort to solicit public input. Quite clearly guided by the good folks at Let's, now Unity. By the way, could there be a less genuine business name for them to adopt? There's clearly no unity at play here other than between the council, administration, and unity. The TTAC meeting that created that fiasco would have followed the script below. As our glossy brochures clearly reveal, Let's has a long history of helping communities like Tiny move forward. That's why we're here. Here's the path to successful completion. It's laid out right here on the oversized wall charts you paid us to develop for you that we brought from our last project. Simple, eh? You show them this, tell them this, dangle this, get them to think the results are mostly their idea, and then do whatever you or we want. Oh, and split them into three locations so they can't see the like response from their fellow citizens. Recipe for success, ka-ching, you're welcome. And the results were the same at all locations, conceptual rejection. I was pleasantly surprised to see the comments that were made at each of the three meetings accurately transposed and included in the 303-page document. I expect you were hoping I'd get tired or hungry and give up reading after the first 30 pages. You listed the comments made by those that showed up on short notice over the dinner hour on a Monday night and then completely ignored them. The overwhelming response was stop this vanity project now and consider a different approach. Few said do nothing, most said don't do this. The approximate costing we were asking for was met by, we don't know what it will cost until you tell us what you want. And yet at no time the numbers appear. And remarkably, the least costly approach costs so close to the most costly approach, it would seem foolish not to splurge, to, Im to improve services in anticipation of our, of our virtually stagnant growth patterns. A recent effort was made by a citizen to inform the taxpayers of the issues at play through signs placed throughout Tiny. They were created and assembled and placed on her own initiative with generous community financial support. This meaningful alert campaign was shut down by their almost immediate removal by town staff when other commercial signs have faded over the years, over years of inattention. Advertisers can offer painting services, but the public can't speak out against your intentions and don't get the public riled up. You state everywhere that Tiny encourages direct citizen participation, but your recent actions reveal the exact opposite. No one will forget this. It was your choice and still is. Repeated requests for meaningful community interaction have been rejected flat out, but the mayor chooses to meet with a prominent beach association to attempt to gain their support. Will that meeting and results be documented? The Stop the Building petition, which has over 2,300 signatures and continues to grow, has now been accepted by town staff with no comment or commitment made as to how or, well, or, or, how or if it will be considered. Sadly, I wasn't surprised to read the council is seeking to reach a decision, then hold meetings to once again allow public input. On what? The choice of fixtures in a flashy community events kitchen? In summary, most of you have chosen to march lockstep be be forward, hiding, hiding behind the mayor and CAO, and their desire to improve things for all, at our expense. You can choose to change that. In closing, I'm asking you all on behalf of the citizens here tonight, and the thousands more that feel the same way, to put this project on hold. No one will complain about the money spent to get to where we are now if it saves us spending what everyone knows will inevitably balloon into a $30 million boondoggle. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, right, thank you. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Wolf, please, we have some questions for you. Can you just sit down, please? Councillor Wama. Thank you, Worship, through you. I uh, appreciate the comments today, um, and I would say a lot of them follow almost a soap opera story the way presented. It seems that way to us, too. Sir? But the, exactly uh, it is. my question, my direct question is, did you reach out to anyone on council and ask for a sit-down? You referenced the mayor. Oh, a, okay, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say this once, okay? The next person that talks is leaving. You ref, you Sir? Ref Can you escort him out? I you have to leave. I object. We all object. You're not objecting. You're so rough. No. You be professional. Sit down. Sit down. The. Do you want to leave? You can smile. Do you want to leave? I'm not leaving. No. We can be civil. No. None of us are leaving. No. I what I'm getting at, no. sir, is that I'll Council is 100% on board with meeting and chatting with the public. 
And to the comment that you made it presented like a special interest meeting with a special group, they reached out and asked for a meeting. You have not done that. Uh, Paul Bell uh, reached out and asked me about sitting down to have a discussion about libraries. I did that. I'm, I'm just saying that there's a, it's a two-way communication, and those two-way communications are open. If you want to sit down with council, myself, anyone here, simply reach out and ask, and we're happy to do that. Can the rest of my friends join us? Yes. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, You're here now, yeah. We're here. What, what will it take? It's, I'm just letting you know. Like okay. the, this is a we're an open communication and happy yeah. to sit down. Great. That's that's Thanks. that's that's great to know. So can we ask right now for a meeting with my friends and others to yes. discuss the town hall? Yeah. 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 We do have a report coming at the end of the meeting where we will have these discussions. Thank you, sir. You, so was that a yes or a no? I'm sure I missed that. I, can I ask for a meeting? You can ask for a meeting, yes. Okay, and, okay. and when might I get an answer to that question? If, if you send me an email, we can sit down and have that discussion. <laughs> You'll have it in two minutes. Okay, perfect. And when might I expect a response to my email? Uh, at the end of the meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be here. Any other comments, Kathy? Anybody else like to make an open deputation this time? Okay, move on. To I, I would like to speak. Absolutely. Ms. Solnick, you've been you've already spoken in the last six months. But it's not on the same topic. What is the topic you're going to discuss? It's about Tatum and the actual agenda, the number of pages on the agenda that was given out on Thursday, and that's it. What agenda are you referring to? Well, the regular meeting and the committee of the whole was 587 pages. And okay. I just wanted to make a comment. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That I didn't know what, what, you're, what agenda you were referring that, to. Uh, that it came out on Thursday, and yeah. that's a lot of information. Have a seat, please. Have a seat. That's a lot of information for the public to absorb just before the Easter weekend. I wanted to make that statement. And it is a little confusing. It's a lot of information. A lot of the people here haven't been on the committee that you, that you stand on with the building committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone through it like pages 11 to uh, 17 are, are all the options that you guys are going to be giving direction on today. Option one, 1.2, you know, up to 4.2. And then at the, and then on page, uh, it's in the 200s, there's appendix A1, or like A1 and A3. And for even for me, who I went through every single page, I'm a little confused what option 1.1 if it's A1 or like it's confusing and I just wanted to make a statement about that. And I also wanted to talk about Tatum because it's on the agenda and the charter. And I'll be done in five minutes. That's fine, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, you mentioned earlier that council doesn't take direction from Robert Lamb or the senior staff, but in the charter on page six of eight, on page 237 of 303, um, under decision process, on the second paragraph, there's a sentence there. It says, staff will develop recommendations and present to the committee for consideration. And I just thought it would say, staff and consultants will develop recommendations and present it to the council for consideration because council's making decisions. So I just thought maybe that's a typo error and it's not word right. I think, I think uh, any decision process should be made to council. And I wanted to bring up uh, Tatum Engineering because you are giving them another four-year contract. Um, I read their, I saw their PowerPoint presentation and for over 24 months, there's 416, um, you know, n where they haven't made uh, their pump out reports. They're in, um, they're deficient. So I'm not a septic guy, but I just, I, I'm concerned about the environment. And I just feel if somebody hasn't complied for 24 months, I thought that would be referred to the bylaw department and a summons would be issued or there'd be like an escalation. And when they presented their report, uh, nobody questioned them. And I also wanted to point out just from, um, uh, there's from 2021, there's 71 that are, have not been uh, up to compliance and there's been no enforcement on it. And it's 2024 and I just thought that was kind of important. And also, I want to point out that um, regarding the building, they're saying it's crowding, but we have Tatum in there, and they got offices in Barrie, Aurelia, 
Bracebridge, Ta Collingwood, and I did call them, and none of their offices are inside of a municipal office building. They're all located separate on their own. And I understand that they pay $600 a month rent plus 5% of each initial inspection. So that's about $30. So I just thought with the new building, when I looked at the somatics, how much it is a square foot, it's a lot of money. And I just thought if we're crowded, like I don't want to sound mean, but I just thought maybe Tatum could go rent office space at the mall in Midland and they could still provide services because if we need the floor, you know, the square footage, I don't know why we're renting to somebody, that's all. And I guess that's all I want to say. Great, thanks Mr. Lomick. Any comments, questions, council? <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Zelnick. Um, I just want to correct something around your, uh, your statement around the bylaw for the septic uh, pump outs, the deficiencies. I actually did question them in the last meeting and asked oh. them whether it was a policy directive of council, previous councils, as to why it was taking so long. Um, I so if I'm you sorry. just re review it, I actually did question them. Okay. I do care about Thank the you. environment. Thank, Thank you. you. That's awesome. I'm sorry I said that wrong. Councilor Wong? Remember that. Uh, thank you, Worship, through you. Just a clarity piece. Uh, when you're building a facility like this, you're planning for future development. We're looking at 50 years of use of this building. So you don't plan the building for what you need today. You plan the building for what you need in the future. So a rental space that would be going to Tatum now uh, in 15 years when we grow and add more staff, they would then be exactly to your point. We don't have the capacity for you. We have our own staff to house. You're going to have to look elsewhere, and that could be Midland, as you suggest, or wherever. So, appreciate your comments. Um, one question, though. You did say that they would, in the literature I read somewhere, I don't know the exact page, but it was said in their contract when they would have, we would be building brick and mortar, and they would be having office space in the new building, if there is a new building. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 100%. We're planning in for that concept now, but again, it is our space, and if you'd have that space available now, when you're planning for a building 30, 40 years down the road, why wouldn't we try and create some revenue from that open space in the interim? Okay, it's not a lot of revenue. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's great. All right, moving on to deputations, council scheduled deputations. We have Paul Cowley. The Federation of Tiny Township Shoreline Associations with regards to the new municipal administration building. Mr. Cowley? Oh, I'm sorry, was there another? Is, is the five minutes one's over? Uh, no, there's I didn't see any other hands, so yes. Oh, she, was out, she wanted to have a water. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Cowley. Sorry. We'll, we'll finish the open deputations then. Okay. Sorry, I've never done this before. Oh, so I'm sorry, no. I. I I don't do it right. No, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about My it. My name is Lori Drury. I've been a resident um, of Tiny since 1975 when I was born. Um, I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been a taxpayer since 2015 when I moved back to the area. Um, good evening, Mayor and Councils. Councillors, I'm sorry if I'm emotional, but this means a lot to me. Um, I'm going to talk about page 282 to 303 in the report. I believe it refers to the town hall we had um, that was talked about earlier about the new building. So I want to talk about the new building, the new administration building. I feel that that town hall was unfair. I feel like it was sprung upon us. All of a sudden we're getting a new building and we're being asked to tell you what we want in a new building when a lot of us didn't even know that a new building was happening. And it, it, you say, send us an email, did you do a meeting? I don't think those things are necessary. There should have been a town hall right from the beginning asking us, residents, taxpayers, what we want. We don't want a new building. So that board of sticky notes that you had at La Fontaine at the meeting that I went to, there was at least 26 sticky notes on that board, and I believe there was more, that said either no new building or reconsider. So I think that's a pretty clear message, along with the petition that has over 2,000 um, 
signatures that it's pretty clear that a lot of us don't want a new building. I believe the majority of the people in this room don't want a new building. So I'm gonna cut it short. I have a list of things to talk about. I'm gonna let you know that I sent an email and it pretty much says what's on this that, that I care about. My name's Lori Drury, so look up my email. Please read it, please respond to me, and please vote tonight to hold off your decision so that we can all have a say on whether or not we want a new building. This shouldn't be your decision or some guy who came and gave you a presentation and, and gave you a pretty package with bows on it about how beautiful a new building will be with exercise rooms and whatever it is you guys think you're gonna have in a new building. We need to be sensible about this and I know you're planning for the next 50 years or whatever. This building has been here since before I was born. It's historical, it has meaning, it has meaning to me, it has meaning to my family. I have children and I want them to see what my town looked like before everything became, city became cityfied and, and new and, and you don't have to have something new to be able to be functional and do its job. And I don't think a building's needed. Please, please vote to wait and let us have a say. Great, thank you, Mrs. Drury. <laughs> so we did, um, I did receive your email today at 2.31, just so you know, so we've all got it. So. Council, any comments, questions? No? Okay, great. Thank you very much. So do we have any more deputations? Mr. Cowley, sorry, thank you for your patience. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Evans and uh, Council of Tiny. The Federation of Tiny Township Shoreline Associations, otherwise known as FOTSA, is writing to urge Council to significantly change its process for developing a new municipal administration building. The development of a new town hall would be a once in a lifetime initiative, which when undertaken should engage, inspire, and unite the residents of the township. FOTSA believes that there's been inadequate up-to-date information provided to the public regarding the justification and scope of the building project, the priority of the town hall project relative to other inf essential infrastructure spending demands, the assessment of alternatives, and the rationale for selecting a site remote from any settlement areas. The sessions held on Monday, December the 11th, following only one week of notice, were designed to seek public input exclusively on the matter of features and programming the participants would suggest to be included in the project. Not only is the approach adopted by the township constrained the scope of public input generally, but its process did not provide seasonal residents any reasonable opportunity to be engaged. Nevertheless, as you're aware, the public in attendance expressed concern related to the many aspects of the proposal. On or about January the 5th of this year, the Township Administration and Council received email correspondence from two township residents, Ted and Nancy Phelps, which has also been provided to FOTSA. The Phelps outlined a number of serious flaws in the site selection process, including the inappropriately small weight given in the scoring matrix to fundamentally significant planning criteria including adherence to the township's own official plan. Next, a failure to recognize that a portion of the selected site appears in the County of Simcoe official plan as unevaluated wetland and is zoned environmental protection too. FOTSA believes that the Phelps well-researched and authoritatively articulated allegations are credible and they warrant a positive response and a thorough consideration. By July 1st of this year, you know, I'm sure you're due an asset management plan that has to be completed for all the township's infrastructure assets, 
and proposed levels of service, activities, and funding required to meet those levels of service and any estimated funding shortfall. The township will be required to demonstrate that it's undertaken asset management planning so that any requests for provincial funding are supported. A transparent, publicly communicated plan would provide an understanding of all anticipated costs and thus contribute to enhanced accountability. This would afford an opportunity for public discussion to the township's needs, priorities, and financial requirements, and a more convincing demonstration that council intends to invest responsibly. At a minimum, in the near future, council should commit to provide to the public the following. A valid, up-to-date assessment of existing administrative building deficiencies and future facility requirements accounting for the capability of new information and communication technology and its impact on office space requirements. Next, a preliminary program of proposed building elements identifying those that are deemed essential and those in the discretionary category. Further, a preliminary estimate of the cost of the proposed essential and possible discretionary projects and realistic financing options and implications. And finally, an assessment of the priority of the possible town hall investment relative to all anticipated township infrastructure investment requirements. Furthermore, the town hall site selection process should be entirely redone in a better informed and fully documented and transparent manner, incorporating expert land use planning and environmental assessment input, and including a broad analysis of cost and benefits. Finally, and most importantly, the township must engage the public, both permanent and seasonal residents, in much more meaningful engagement with a view to gaining broad consensus and support for this important community building initiative. If a new town hall is really required, then let's have one that makes the residents of the township feel proud and not angry. To achieve this outcome, Council must immediately direct that its staff significantly revise the approach to advancing the project. Be assured that this request, if this request is dismissed, FOTSA and others will petition the county and provincial government agencies and ministries for their effective intervention. Please respond at your earliest convenience within two weeks with a commitment to this direction. And at that time, you would also like answers to the following questions. One, for over a year, COVID-19 municipal offices were closed to the public. The majority of staff worked off-site very effectively. Investment was made by the township to support remote working and for the residents to access services online. Is working remotely a potential alternative for employees or certain departments instead of constructing new workspaces for them? Number two, while we can understand that the portables have become an unfit and unsafe environment for staff, has consideration been given to relocating certain staff to other areas? For example, could the recreation staff be accommodated at the existing community center with minor modifications? Third, since the public works building on the ninth concession had extra dollars spent on it to support it in structurally, could the construction of a second level space be used to house the public works water staff? Four, if there is a shortage of space for staff accommodation, why does the township rent office space to Tatum Engineering? Seems to be a popular question tonight. Five, once completed by July 1, 2024, Will the asset management plan for infrastructure assets and proposed levels of service, activities, and funding be accessible to the taxpayers on the website? We feel that a transparent, publicly community asset management plan provides a foundation for this council and its taxpayers to understand the costs of providing services. This would contribute to enhanced accountability for decision making and would open an opportunity for council to discuss needs, priorities, and financial requirements on a more informed basis and would demonstrate that the public money is being invested responsibly by showing that results are being achieved. Number six, what is the scope of the architectural service related to the new municipal building 
which is presently requested by the township and funded by the $400,000 identified in the recently adopted budget. Seven, is there any way in which the information provided to the public on the dedicated webpage could be provided more expeditiously? On March the 5th, 2023, the most recent committee meetings available were from December the 18th of 2023. Number eight, how does it make sense to council that the minutes of the December 18 meeting of the committee indicate that the project consultants have created a functional program while at the same meeting they were directed to update the building needs assessment study done in 2017. Seems like the cart before the horse. Shouldn't the functional program of a new building be entirely based on identified needs? Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Collin. Council, any comments, questions? Councilor Wallman. Uh, your Worship, through you. Uh, Mr. Cowley, I appreciate the comments today and I uh, just wanted to assure you that we are going through a process. We are engaging the public and we're at the beginning stages of all of that. Um, you act like this is something that's been sprung upon you. And the this has been identified in the strategic plan in 2015. Please. Uh, as the president of FOTSA, you were one of the key stakeholders engaged in the strategic planning process. In the goal number one, deliver official, efficient and exceptional municipal services, item number seven on the list is implement renovation slash construction of a township office, medium term, three to five years out. We didn't get it done in three to five years, but further to that, you later respond in that email. Oh, where did it go? You respond directly to George Cornell, Karen Wyanecki in that process that a strategic plan is a 15 to 20 year planning document. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're at. We, do we have to do a, a, a master plan every three years if, we, if you don't move forward on something? So. In today's report, I'm not sure if you got through all of it because yes, there is a lot and the comment about it being sent out on Thursday, we get it then too, is we are doing an EIS. We are going through the planning analysis. We do have additional public engagement sessions happening. This is just the beginning phases of this project. So, I'm not laughing. I'm just saying that we are, you talk about cart and horse. I would say that this deputation is early. We are still going through all of those pieces of the puzzle. They just haven't happened yet. Thank you, Council. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, Mr. Crowley. The, 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 what I would say to that, Councillor Walma, is this isn't about a strategic plan. Of course, we understand that's a long range program. And this isn't about uh, Fox's opinion. Uh, I, I mean, it's not. Not, uh, uh, not at all hidden that many factions in this township are upset, first, with the openness of the process, and secondly, with the, the, the rapidness that it's going forward, committing $400,000 worth of expenditure, and we don't even yet know what we need. I don't think anyone, at least to my knowledge, uh, is saying that you shouldn't have adequate uh, office space to house the people that need to be housed uh, in, in a reasonable work environment. I don't know of anybody that's saying that. But what we are saying, and what has been documented in multiple corners of this township, it, it is that the process by which you're going about trying to figure that out, A, is flawed for all the reasons that I've enumerated and many other people have, uh, and B, your public engagement is terrible. It's awful. You had one meeting. You have had one public meeting, and, and inputs from people at that meet those meetings were, were stifled at best. So how the how and, and, and in the middle of winter when nobody is here from the seasonal residents. So you know, 
Without the details and the specific answers to any one question, to me, I think what I'm hearing throughout the, the township is it's time for council to be more open and engaging and involving. You have many, many people in this township with a tremendous amount of skills that could help you and your staff. I mean, unbelievable amounts of skills. Uh, and CAO Lamb, I know, is aware that we've also uh, suggested that to the previous council when he was at a meeting with myself and the mayor at the time, that you develop a skills inventory of assets of people, skill, human skills, that could help you. You've got a lot of very complex problems on your plate. I get it. Everybody gets that. So why don't you engage and involve people that can help you solve that without having to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on consultants? <laughs> okay. Thank you for your further? engagement and uh, thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. Okay, moving on. Uh, we're pleased to have Chris Figures. Chris is with the Business Association of Bomb Beach, uh, and he's here to talk about a proposal for non-permanent beach stage for enhanced community engagement. Mr. Figures, thanks for coming, and thanks the floor for is yours. Me. Thank you very much for having me. Um, should I just, uh, is this for the, no, okay, it's five minutes. Um, hi, how's everyone tonight? I, um, I, I feel like maybe uh, um, my timing is a little off, but and you, you know what, I, uh, I just, I'm going to switch topics up a little bit and uh, just talk about a few ideas and uh, just to present a few uh, things to you. Um, first off, I'd like to extend a huge thanks from all of us at the Business Association of Palm Beach. Your involvement and support over the years has helped us make a very special um, uh, make a, an, this event a very special one for our community. Uh, the reason for this deputation is to propose the installation of a non-permanent stage on the beachfront of Bomb Beach. And as we navigate through our evolving community needs, I feel that it's important that we explore uh, innovative solutions to foster greater community engagement and uh, enjoyment of our natural resources. With the recent enactment of the bylaw prohibiting new structures on the beachfront properties, it has become apparent that a non-permanent stage would be ideal, uh, an ideal solution to support our community events and gatherings. Currently, the township expends its resources setting up and tearing down a modular stage every Thursday during the summer months. Although very much appreciated, I believe that this procedure, uh, or this process, not only consumes valuable time and labor, but it also restricts the frequency and variety of events that we can host throughout the week and possibly in the weekends. Uh, by establishing a non-permanent stage that remains in place for the duration of the summer season, we can un unlock a plethora of opportunities for enhanced programming and community engagement from live music performances to cultural festivals to outdoor movie nights and fitness classes. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Moreover, a permanent seasonal stage would be, sorry, would provide a stable platform for showcasing local talent and fostering a sense of community pride. One potential solution is the acquisition of a staged line SL75. I've added, uh, I've sent some uh, a PDF of this uh, uh, non-permanent stage uh, option, and I sent an addendum of some pricing and, and that sort of thing. Um, on that, it, it's it's versatile, easy, deployable stage system. The state of the art. Uh, equipment has been hailed by other mun municipalities for its convenience, flexibility, and efficiency in facilitating a wide range of events. With its ease of setup and teardown, the SL75 would significantly, significantly reduce the logistical burden on the township while maximizing the utilization of our beef beachfront space. Furthermore, investing in a stage line SL75 Probably not the best timing to talk about investing in anything. Uh, pro 
presents a unique opportunity for revenue generation through rental services by offering this resource to neighboring townships and organizations. Uh, we can not only offset the initial investment by, uh, but also generate additional income to support community initiatives and infrastructure projects. In considering this proposal, I urge the council to reflect on tangible benefits that a non-permanent stage would bring to our community from expanding our offerings to streamlining operations and revenue generation. This, initi this initiative aligns with our commitment to fostering a vibrant and inclusive community for residents and visitors alike. And uh, again, Thank you very much for all of your help thus far. And uh, all of this is just uh, something to add to a discussion table. It can be discussed uh, at any time or something to look at. And I uh, appreciate all of your time uh, and everything you've done so far. Great. Thank you, Mr. Figures. A couple of questions. Sure. Deputy Mayor. Thank you through you, Your Worship. Uh, Mr. Figures, thank you so much uh, for your deputation tonight. Uh, very intriguing um, idea. Um, I've seen them throughout uh, southwestern Ontario, different communities being used and kind of deployed and stuff like that. Um, understanding that it is, you know, a pretty significant investment um, overall. I was intrigued by your comment around being able to rent it out to other communities and stuff. Do you know approximately, uh, your best guesstimate, obviously, I'm putting you on the spot right now, what does one of those units rent for typically? Um, so um, I'm not exactly sure. I have a friend that has invested in these certain stages, and they're, they get quite large. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've been asked to uh, book the talent for the Midland uh, butter tart festival as well and we use an sl100 which is a little bit bigger and it's got some side side platforms and that that sort of thing uh the unit all of the units are a two-person setup within half an hour and uh basically um they train this company the manufacturer trains you on how to set them up and to trains a couple people uh to be able to set them up i'd not ask you answering your question i think probably about uh, I would, I'm guessing, uh, because I did see a quote last year, and I was trying to find different companies to um, compete against that one price, and I believe it's about $3,000 for a day. And don't, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I can get more, and that's just the stage. So if you get sound or uh, speakers or lighting or rigging above the stage, that's a whole different ball of wax. Is there a follow-up? Yeah, please. Worship, thank you. For, you. Um, for these uh, these types of units, um, what size, obviously it needs to be towed somewhere, right? I'm assuming it's built on a standard chassis, like trailer chassis. Do you know what type of vehicle it would take to, like I'm just thinking out loud here, if we're carting it around from different beach parks or Great um, question. different parks for deployment, like what kind of equipment, like is there another cost on top of this or... Would the township actually already own this type of equipment to be able to haul it? Basically, a, uh, a regular pickup truck can tow one of these. Um, so anything with a trailer hitch, probably not my little car with the trailer hitch on, although I'd probably try. Um, but anyway, no, uh, I think it's pretty simple. They, uh, the towing capacity is quite light on these. Um, but I, I did send uh, some... Um, uh, specs in uh, as an addendum just to sh sort of show you what the towing capacity is for these things and uh, um, just options and that sort of thing. So that's great. great. Thanks, Mr. Figures. Thank you. Councilor Wom. Thank you, Worship. Through you. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the idea. I am unclear. Is the concept for the municipality to purchase the stage or would this be something you would look at from uh, we have a community improvement program where uh, members of the community can come forward and partially fund uh, an upgrade to their road, to asphalt. And I see that being something that we could do. We have a similar project with uh, uh, Yville. They're interested in upgrading their lights. Um, are you coming to the table with money? Is my question. <laughs> so um, uh, the answer is, uh, well, it wouldn't be, it, I would suggest that maybe the township were, will would t take on something like this while uh, having some people trained uh, to be able to set up and uh, possibly help with the booking and, and uh, generation of uh, um, 
any kind of money that could be made on top of that to other townships um, in order to pay for that uh, over time. But um, uh, hoping that maybe we would be able to take advantage of it too. Uh, but it's just a suggestion. The other suggestion, of course, would be to build some kind of pieced together um, uh, accessible stage area. And right now, I mean, the stage that's set up is, is beautiful. It's a perfect size. Uh, there's power right there at the lamppost. It's, it's great. Um, as far as accessibility goes, uh, it might be nice to build something similar in size that doesn't really impede on the beach too much and something that we can take apart in, in stages. And uh, I'm aware that there's some really neat uh, walkways on the master plan going down to, to make it more accessible um, to the beach and just how it's built out of, I believe it's two by sixes that are put together with fire hoses and that sort of thing. But maybe the same uh, materials can be utilized to make something like a stage uh, and then just taken down in the winter or uh, at the end of the season. So that's just two options that would um, mitigate the amount of labor and, and set up time and maybe just sort of expand the am amount of time over um, to have more acts and um, when it's not being used probably fit uh, a picnic table on or two or something like that but these are just ideas again um, just up for conversation I just throwing it out there but my main uh, to answer your question again as I you ramble on um, just uh, I think as a uh, township asset um, it would pay for itself pretty quickly uh, in aiding other uh, townships and community events and that sort of thing. And I would love to help out with that, if that were to ever happen. Great. Good. Thank you very much. Um, any other comments? Council? Councillor Loker. Yeah, I like the portability of it. Uh, we could expand uh, our uh, Thursday night uh, beach concerts to other parts of the township. Maybe we could go up to La Fontaine on a Friday night or down to Woodland Beach on a, on a Saturday or you know, move it around and uh, let the uh, residents of this beautiful township uh, reap the benefits. So I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bernal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for the uh, deputation. Uh, with the intent of this stage, uh, because the subject is a um, proposal for a non-permanent beach stage, so would it be like just left there for the summer or would it be taken out every night, like uh, after the after the performance on Thursday nights, would it be taken away, brought to, a, to the uh, uh, township uh, um, uh, property or would it would stay there? What's, what would be the concept of... So... Uh, the f first option where we build something that's uh, seasonal um, using, you know, uh, public works um, intelligence and that sort of thing to be able to build something structural and uh, with uh, that's accessible uh, would, in our hopes, be set up for the season and then taken down uh, uh, at the end of the season. Uh, that way it's not a, a daily set, uh, uh, just one day that it's set up or taken down. That way, uh, and uh, the second option would be um, probably stored somewhere on a township property of some sort and uh, still set up by town or volunteers. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so for, thank you, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, so the first option, would be, it would remain there for the season, so it would r rule out the rental component of the, of the stage if we leave it there. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. Um, just one aside comment for information. There is a, a grant program with the County of Simcoe, uh, Tourism, Sport, and Culture. Um, currently, the Township of Tiny, we only have one organization that takes advantage of that. Um, frankly, it tends to be a little more generous than what we as a township can provide. So, And it can be done on an ongoing basis. So I think this would be a great opportunity. Um, I'm on the committee. Not that that means you're going to get the money, but I'm, I'm on the committee. Um, and, but there is money to be had for and this would fall right into tourism. Um, so something that we could uh, put a sticker on the side of it from County of Simcoe and they might be happy. So... Um, just keep that in mind. But That's thanks wonderful. very much for the presentation. Thank great. you. That's wonderful. Okay, Thank good. you very much. Thank you very much. Have a great night.
Okay, moving on. Uh, Section K, reports to consultants or third parties. We don't have anything this evening. Thank you, sir. Um, Section L, adopting and receiving of minutes of previous meetings. I have a mover and a seconder, please. Thank you. Councillor Holoka. Seconded by Councillor Moana. Any items, any discussion on these? Council? No. Councillor Bernal, please. It's like to have a discussion about the Township of Tiny Administrative Center committee minute, meeting minutes from February 26. Okay, so we'll have an amended. Anything else, Council? Okay, so I'll amend the. I'll amend the motion here, just on here, Deputy Clerk, that uh, the items included under Section L1 minutes of Council Advisory Committees and other meetings be adopted, uh, subject to. Excuse me, Mayor Evans. Yep. Just for clarification, is it um, to amend the minutes or just to comment on them? I believe it's just to comment. Comment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Very good. Sorry, I thought it was to amend it. Councillor Bernal, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> it mentions on page three that the <clears throat> communications officer will upload the project charter, communication strategy, and FAQ onto the township website once the project charter has been approved by council. My question is, uh, when was the project charter approved by council? Director Leach, do we have the... Uh, through the mayor, mm -hmm. I believe it was at our last meeting because it was uh, two meetings ago that we presented it. I'd have to look at the exact data when we presented it, but I believe it was at the last meeting that it was approved. So it hasn't been approved yet by council, is that understanding? No, I believe it was presented not at the last meeting, the one before that. Okay. So it would have been ratified at the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so, it ha so has it been uploaded on the website yet? CLA? I, I don't know. I'd have to take a look at the website to answer that question. So. Yeah. I believe it's not. Um, if not, when is it scheduled to be? Sorry, I believe it's not. So when is it scheduled to be uploaded? Maybe we can get an answer back for you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, and I want to make a comment about uh, <clears throat> what um, Councilor Walma said about the public sitting down with council members. Um, I There's three of us that are not on the TTAC committee. I am uh, left in the dark like uh, the public. Uh, I only see the minutes uh, two months later. Um, so I would not encourage the public to talk with council members that are not on the TTAC committee because uh, I would have uh, basically no answers, um, very few answers. I could try to forward the questions to uh, particular department heads um, or encourage them to go to the, uh, the town hall uh, email, but um, I I, um, I do not uh, agree with sitting down with uh, uh, the council members that are not with on the TTAC committee. Okay, thank you for the comments. Council, anything else? And I'm going to reserve my uh, the rest of the comments about that this particular uh, topic at the committee of the whole meeting uh, meeting during the public works report uh, PWR dash zero one three dash two four for further comments about the this administration building. Okay, that's fair enough. Councillor Walman. Uh, thank you, Worship. Through you, just a correction uh, to what Councillor Brunel was saying. He may not be involved directly at the TTAC meetings, but the TTAC is a committee of council and works at the direction of council. So if there were comments delivered from a council member to the TTAC, absolutely those would be incorporated in those meetings. On top of that, when the TTAC brings a recommendation back to council, it is ratified by this table. There's no action prior to. So there are delegated authorities that council gave TTAC and the project manager. Those can also be removed by council. So I would recommend to the public if you do have issues and you can only get a hold of Councillor Holoka or Councillor Brunel or Deputy Mayor Miskimins, absolutely reach out to them. The mayor and myself are, will make ourselves available as much as possible as those representatives. Thank you. If I may, Chair. Sure. Thank you. Um, it's been months that people have reached out to me and um, 
I keep bringing it to the council table, my viewpoints, and uh, uh, it doesn't seem, obviously, uh, after tonight's reaction, uh, nothing is really being done about it. So, uh, public, please continue to engage with uh, all, all council members, uh, and we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, finish your conversation there. Good. All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Don't have any minutes of closed session meetings at this time. Moving on to section L3. Um, that is the recommendations contained in the committee. The whole report zero, uh, from March 13th, 2024 be voted upon. Mover and a seconder for discussion. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Pernell. Discussion, Council? We're good? Okay, just because there is an option here, I'll state it again that the recommendations contained within Committee of the Whole Report 0313 2024 has voted upon, be formally approved and adopted. All those in favor? Thank you. The motion is carried. Okay, moving on to matters for consideration. Uh, item M1, Mayor's Charity Golf Tournament Working Committee, the Charity Support Resolution. Um, mover and a seconder for discussion. Thank you, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Holoka. The risk of brevity, interest of brevity, I'll, uh, we can see them all, I'll, I'll state the motion once. Are there any concerns or comments on this motion, Council? Okay, uh, I do need to state this So, uh, The resolution is that uh, Council herein approves a recommendation from the Mayor's Charity Golf Tournament Committee regarding the charity selection for the 2024 Charity Golf Tournament proceeds as follows. Angels with backpacks, $3,000. BGC North Simcoe, $2,500. Big Brothers Big Sisters of North Simcoe, $2,500. CLCH Foundation for $3,500. Compassion Place for $2,500. Friends of Awenda for $2,000. Gateway Center for Learning of $5,000. Georgian Bay Cancer Support Center for $2,575. Georgian Bay Food Network for $7,000. Georgian Shores Swinging Seniors for $500. Hospice Heronia for $2,500. Heronia Community Foundation for $3,000. Independent Living Services Simcoe County for $2,500. Quest Art School and Gallery for $3,000. Scientists in School for $4,900. And Systema Heronia Music Academy for $2,500. And We Are Villagers for $5,000 and that the funds be distributed to the supported applicant organizations on a prorated basis should there be a surplus or deficit from the fundraising goal. All those in favor? Thank you, the motion's carried. Just as an aside, the tournament is June 14th at the Midland Golf Country Club. The res registration is open, and uh, we're currently in the midst of uh, finalizing our sponsorship list, which is going quite well, so hope to see you out there. All right, moving on to item M2, which is Planning Development Report PD-007-24, which is the appointment of a sewage system inspector. Uh, mover and seconder, please. Thank you. Councillor Burnell, seconded by Councillor Holoka. Any discussion on this item? We're good, okay, thank you. Resolution is that bylaw 24-021 to appoint Mr. Jacob Robbins as an inspector for the Township of Tiny for the purpose of on-site sewage system inspections be passed and enacted this third day of April, 2024. All those in favor? <coughs> Thank you, motion's carried. Moving on to item M3, which is Public Works Report PWR-015-24, Silver Birch Retaining Wall Tender Results. Can I have a mover and a seconder for discussion? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Brunel, thank you. Discussion, Council? 
Councilor Bernal, please. Yes, to you, Chair. I'd like to um, um, hear from uh, Director Leach about the the history of this uh, particular wall. Like, what um, was it built by the township initially, um, or not? Like, just just a bit of background on on the on the putting up this wall. Uh, through the mayor. Director Leach. <clears throat> yeah, through the mayor. Um, yes, it was. Uh, this was a, a township uh, project that was constructed. I believe it was about 40 years ago um, and built in the design. As it states in the report, it's uh, kind of a gravity um, a type system where the slope of the wall holds back the, uh, the, the dirt basically in the back. Um, when we initially looked at this uh, project, it was to replace the entire wall. And um, we got our quotes in and we uh, sat back down with the engineering uh, firm that we've been working with and looking at how we can reduce that cost. And we were able to determine that a certain section of it needed to be replaced, um, that the wall was actually, it should be six degrees back, it's actually facing forward. So I was immediate concern. Um, and some of that was caused by the drainage at the time that was installed. So uh, what we've determined and through the engineers confirmed this, that we can just replace that uh, particular section, improve the drainage in behind, um, set the baskets back in, get the six degree slope, and um, that will hold it uh, hold it back in place. Also, uh, some piles that we are considering put it's like a, you know one of the uh, um, extra um, retainment of it, and um, we deemed that that really wasn't necessary and it didn't provide any value. Also, a reduction in cost uh, was to repave that section of road, and we were going to repave that. Uh, we were planning on doing that in 2025 anyway, so we'll capture that cost during our regular capital asphalt planning. Councilor Bernal? Yeah, thank you. Follow up. Um, these piles that you were talking about, um, that is not included. Well, one of the options is, is to go with 70% of the retaining wall getting done. The um, piles, are they going to be in the face of the wall itself? Director Leach? Yep, uh, through the mayor. Uh, originally, yes, they would be in the face. Uh, you've probably seen them in some walls. It'd be a big washer, essentially, and you'll drive the pile back down through into the, uh, the ground in behind, and that would provide, uh, you know, the belt and suspender type uh, solution on it. Um, but after we did our investigation and determined that the majority of the reason for the deterioration of this particular wall was the drainage that was installed at that time, and by improving the drainage uh, would uh, remove the necessity to have to put the piles in. One more question. Yes. Uh, would it be possible to put those piles in, let's say, five years from now? Um, well, uh, through the mayor, uh, we've determined that the piles just aren't even necessary. Um, so that's uh, the, the fault that we did find with some of the drainage uh, techniques that were used at the time um, are not effective, and that's what caused um, uh, some of that uh, failure mode that we did see. And so we've determined that the piles are not necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Congratulations getting uh, 442 and a budget of 446. Especially when you look at the disparity of, of, uh, of, of quotes. 1.37 million, so, okay. sorry, uh, Deputy Mayor and then uh, Councillor Loka, please. Thank you, Three Your Worship. Uh, Director Leach, so the section of wall that we, you know, you're proposing that isn't going to be replaced, thinking of asset management, how long do we think that other section would last? I just, I always take into consideration, is it better to just do it now, given we're seeing the increased price on all these types of materials? Like, uh, I like to be able to weigh the difference um, between now or... 20 years from now? Um, uh, through the mayor, again, excellent question. And that was obviously uh, one of the first questions that I asked too was, uh, um, you know, pay me now or pay me later. Um, when, when we took a look, and, and we also reviewed this with our consulting engineering group, um, that um, when we took a look at it, we felt that the, the drainage um, impact in that section uh, would not uh, require us to do any further work on it. Um, we're confident as, as far as if I could give a year on it, I'd be a genius if I could predict those types of things. But um, we feel very confident that this fix will, uh, will last a long time. And at this point, it's not worth the, the expense that we'd have to go to now to improve something that's already structurally sound. Um, we're also, when we improve the drainage in the one area, we're also going to be doing ditching work in that area too to make sure that the water that does accumulate on the side of the road gets away quickly so what we do have will be effective. So um, we're very confident that the, the approach that we're taking will have a, a long-lasting um, effect and uh, we won't have to be attacking this one for quite a long time. 
Thanks, Director Leach. You're welcome. Councilor Loca, please. Yes, through you, Your Worship. Uh, Director, when did this 30% uh, of the south wall, when did it start to move? When were you first made aware of this? What year approximately? Well, I've uh, been with the township uh, be eight years and 21 days. Um, and uh, I was aware of the time at that time and uh, we kind of used one of the hydro poles as our barometer that when I first got here I saw how far it was away and it's been slowly but surely creeping closer and closer to it. Um, and that's why we felt that uh, we had been looking at this for a couple of years now and uh, we feel now's the time to, to get it done. Yeah. Um, Councillor Brunel and I took a road trip up there to actually physically see what was at hand. And uh, I'm just a little, I don't know, I would say a little concerned that this wasn't done sooner. Um, no disrespect to previous councils, but it seems like, you know, this is another sort of bomb that's landed in our lap that, uh, you know, could have been resolved earlier. That's uh, just a comment. Thank you. No water under the bridge. Okay, um, any other comments, Council? We're good? Okay, good. Okay, the motion is the Public Works Report PWR-015-24 regarding tender PW23-09 for the Silver Birch retaining wall reconstruction be received and that Council directs staff to proceed with the pro proposal from GMP contracting in the amount of $442,481.72 plus HST. All those in favor? Thank you, the motion's carried. Moving any new business council at this time? None that I see, okay. No, any notice of motions today? None that I see, okay. Uh, we have uh, four bylaws under consideration. Uh, the motion is the proposed bylaws 24-014, 24-015, 24-018, 24-019, 24-020, 24-021, 24-022, 24-023, 24-024, 24-025, 24-026, 24-027, 24-028, 24-029, 24-030, 24-031, 24-032, 24-033, 24-034, 24-035, 24-036, 24-037, 24-038, 24-039, 24-040, 24-041, 24-042, 24-043, 24-044, 24-045, 24-046, 24-047, 24-048, 24-049, 24-050, 24-051, 24-052, 24-053, 24-054, 24-055, 24-056, 24-057, 24-057, 24-058, 24-059, 24-060, 24-061, 24-062, 24-067, 24-068, 24-069, 24-070, 24-071, 24-072, 24-073, 24-074, 24-075, 24-076, 24-077, 24-078, 24-079, 24-078, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 24-079, 